You know, when you call 911, there are many uh, people working the phone banks in New York City, and the 911 operator has a whole host of services and emergency personnel that can be put in place to save your life. The number 911 has been designated as an emergency phone number. It's actually a crime to use it uh, in any kind of way other than strict emergencies. The uh, 911 operator will ask you about your location, about the nature of the emergency, and then based on your answers to three or four questions, they will send the appropriate fire department, ambulance, uh, police, or whatever is needed. Now, what if you had grown up in a home where your parents only taught you to count from one to eight, but they would not actually teach you the number nine, so you only knew how to dial 811. You did not know how to dial 911. What if this was a deliberate, uh, although ignorant, thing that was perpetrated on you. In my home, I had a grandfather who was a very violent uh, child abuser, wife abuser, uh, alcoholic. And yet I never had a memory of my mother sitting down my brother and I, and talking frankly about alcoholism. I just don't think it was ever brought up. So my brother died of alcoholism. This was one of the shortcomings of my mother, of my parents, that they never really talked about the tremendous problem that we had in our family. My brother had the genetic predisposal to be an alcoholic. I assume I did as well. My mother should have got out a fifth of whiskey, taken us to the bathroom, poured it in the toilet, and explained to us the poison that is in that bottle and how it almost ruined her life and how she was almost starved to death and how her sick mother was thrown out of the house and all the terrible stories. My brother might have been a teetotaler all of his life and never touched alcohol and had a completely different life. If that, if that little bit of instruction had been given to us Look at this. I went to school in Bloomington, Indiana at Indiana University. And this is the Comprehensive Yiddish English Dictionary. And it is published by the Indiana University Press. Now, let me show you this. Yoshka Pandra or Pandrick Yod Aleph Sheen Kof Ayan Pe Aleph Noon Dalit Resh Ayan Pe Aleph Noon Dalit Resh Yod Kof Yoshka Pandra Jesus Christ Pejority To teach a child this word 
would be the equivalent of teaching him only 8-1-1. Because whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the saving name is actually blasphemed here in a crude and wicked way. Now I'm going to show you something. The urgency of the good news was such that it was put in the, the language that was the lingua franca of the time, which was Greek, thanks to Alexander the Great, who conquered the world and spread this language. Do you see this? I'm going to spell it for you very slowly. This is Yota, Eta, Sigma, Omicron, Epsilon. This is the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 45. And notice, it is talking about Joshua, or Yehoshua, ben Nun. And the name is spelled exactly as Yeshua, the very same. No change at all in the uh, uh, orthography uh, or the uh, spelling of the actual name. So in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, whenever we come to this word, we put Yehoshua slash Yeshua. Now, he saves. He, he helps. Who helps? Hashem helps. Hashem saves. yod He vav He helps. yod He vav He saves. That's what the word means in Hebrew. And in Math Matthew, we start out with uh, giving the baby, and of course this virgin was with child before they came together. Yeshua was born, and only after that did they have relations? But when you get to Matthew, the very first chapter, you see that the shameful aspect of a teenage unwed mother had prompted Yosef ben David to put her away quietly with a get, a divorce. And that's what he was going to do. But he had a dream, and in the dream, an angel told him to marry her because the baby was by the Ruach HaKodesh. And then there is a prophecy given. Behold, the Parthenos uh, and then it gives this name. His name, Emmanuel. God is with us. Now the Barinosh is God and is to be worshipped as God. Pei Lamed Het. Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. The Friends of Daniel will not pay Lamed Het, the idols of Nebuchadnezzar. They will not be worshipped as deity. Daniel chapter 3, verses 12 and verse 18. But all peoples will pay Lamed Het, the Barinosh. So he is God. But now, he is going to be God with us. And then when you get to the end of this book, the very... 
last few words. Okay. He talks about how he's been given all authority in heaven and in earth. And he explains that he is with them always. You see this? Behold, I am with you. I with you always. Even unto the end of the earth. End of time, actually. Uh, this word right here means end. The end of, of time. I am with you always, even to the end of time. So he is Emmanuel. He is with us. When I have an emergency, I call 911. And as far as the emergency of my soul is concerned, I cry out to him. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. It is the cruelest thing that Satan could ever do to uh, take this name, this holy name, this saving name, and turn it into a pejorative blasphemous mockery.